Biogas, or biomethane, plays an important role in the conversion to a sustainable energy system. However, its benefits are to be spread further afield. It would be necessary to introduce efficient new production methods to complement today's anaerobic digestion technology. Thermal gasification of forestry byproducts is one such method. And that is precisely what Gobi Gas is all about. Transforming branches, treetops and other forest residues into clean biomethane. And if there's one thing we have in abundance in this country, it is forests. The Gobi Gas facility has been developed in close cooperation with Chalmers University of Technology and the business sector to promote large-scale biomethane production from forest residues. But how exactly does one transform residues from the forestry industry into gas? Let's take a closer look at this advanced process in which the laws of physics and chemistry interact in a unique way. Converting forestry byproducts into biomethane is a two-stage process. The first is a thermal gasification stage in which the raw material is converted into a blend of various gases known as seam gas. The second is methanation, where the syn gas is purified and refined into methane gas of the same high quality as natural gas. Let's begin by looking at the gasification process. Wood pellets or branches and treetops that have been chopped into chips are delivered to the facility where they are fed into a gasifier. Here, they are subjected to very high temperature. The heat comes from a separate combustion chamber and is transferred to the gasifier with the help of a recirculating heat-bearing bed material, in this case, sand. Since the environment inside the gasifier is oxygen-free, complete combustion does not take place. Instead, the woody materials are transformed into a gas mixture that can later be refined. Combustion also creates flue gases. These are taken care of in a post-combustion chamber, which completely incinerates the carbon monoxide and reduces the nitrogen oxide content. After this, the flue gases are cleaned once again, with particles being separated via a flue gas filter. Here, and at several other stages, the flue gas or syn gas is cooled down, making it possible to recover heat which is used in other parts of the plant or delivered into the district heating system to warm up homes, schools and workplaces throughout Gothenburg. But back to the process. When the syn gas leaves the gasifier, it consists primarily of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, water vapour and methane, as well as sulphur compounds and heavier hydrocarbons, that is to say tars such as naphthalene which must be removed. This cleaning process takes place in several steps. First, the gas is cooled, after which particles are separated in a special gas filter. And then the gas is cleaned with biodiesel in a device known as an RME scrubber. The tars that are removed accompany the used biodiesel into the combustion chamber. In the next stage, the gas is further filtered using activated carbon. The tars that are extracted here are also sent to incineration. Before methanation can begin, the gas pressure is raised from just above atmospheric pressure to 16 bar. In addition, the gas has to be cleaned of all traces of chlorine and sulphur compounds, since these may damage the catalysts used in the methanation process. Cleaning takes place both in an absorption vessel and in an amine washer. Now the gas is ready for the first stage of methanation. With the help of a device, known as a shift reactor and a catalytic process, the gas's chemical compound is altered, so that the ratio between its hydrogen and carbon monoxide content is adjusted to 3 to 1. As a result, additional carbon dioxide can be removed. This takes place in yet another amine washer. The extracted carbon dioxide is returned to the process and is used for various purposes, such as inerting fuel silos during filling. In the next stage of methanation, the gas is refined still further in yet another catalytic process that in several stages converts it into pure methane gas, that is to say, biomethane. Before the biomethane can be fed into the gas grid, it is dried to prevent the formation of condensation in the gas. 
The pressure is now raised to 35 bar and the biomethane is ready to be delivered to the West Sweden transmission grid for gas. That's what the journey from forest to biomethane looks like. Forest residues become clean energy and vision becomes reality. <laughs>